We're here at Click Connect 2025 in Orlando. I have the pleasure of catching up again with Carl Jordan. Carl is the head of the AI practice here at Click. Carl, great to see you again. Yeah, thanks for having me. We were just talking off camera. We actually caught up in Sydney at the uh, AI reality tour that Click ran uh, a number of months ago. I yeah, can't even remember how long ago. ago. How long was that ago? I don't know. It's all a blur. I think <laughs> it was like October or November, if I remember correctly. We were yeah. just coming into summertime. That's so, true. Yeah, yeah, it does feel like a blur. There's yeah. so much going on. Um, for our audience who may not be as familiar with you as I would like them to be, yeah. give us a quick walkthrough of sort of how you came to Click and your sort of overall path to, to join the organization first. And I'd like to then dive into kind of what a day in the life of Carl Jordan's like. How did you come to Click and, and what is that story like? Yeah, so I think there's actually quite a number of us now that have come via an acquisition. Yes. Uh, so I came from the acquisition of a company called Big Squid back in uh, 2021, uh, and that has now evolved into the Click Predict platform. So yep. it's our, uh, our machine learning capability, automated machine learning capabilities uh, that we have. And so that's where I came into the company. We do it a lot of, that was the basis of our AI offering. And yep. then obviously, you know, now we have evolved much broader to Indeed. include generative AI and now even moving into the agentic world uh, of AI. So. Awesome. It's probably a weird question because there is no such thing, but what is, the, what is an average day in your life like? What's a day in the life of Carl Jordan at the moment uh, outside of just going to events and so forth? Yeah. Uh, when you get up and start the day, what are some of the key challenges you're facing uh, on sort of a day-to-day -day operational side of things? Yeah, I, I, I think I'm in a pretty fortunate position of where I get to blend a lot of worlds where people work in silos. So yeah. uh, I sit in Salt Lake City, Utah, which is where a lot of our AI development team and our, a lot of AI uh, brain trust is, if you will. And okay. so I get to work every day with the designers, the product managers, and the builders of the AI technology that we have at Click. Um, but I also get to work with the field every day. So I'm often talking to customers, working with our uh, field reps mm -hmm. and, and like you said out in events where I'm hearing directly from customers and partners what are they looking for in AI products what's working today with what Click has and where do we need to be moving in right. order to build for what they need and then I get to blend those two worlds together so I get to take that feedback to the product side and make sure that we're working on the right stuff so that we're not building something that no one's ever going to use right. that's an awesome job yeah. I bet there's a million people who sort of tune in and go, I want to send my CV to that. <laughs> um, on the other side of things, you're also you know, effectively a brand champion in many ways. You travel around the world, you do a bunch of events, you do speaking gigs. I know when I met you in Sydney, I had the opportunity to get you on camera yet again. Mm -hmm. um, so that must be at least half your life is sort of being out there championing the brand and, and not just talking to people about what they want from the product, but also making them aware that the product exists and what its capabilities are. Is that a, what's that balance like? Yeah, no. Sorry, is that a day job versus the brand champion? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it, it comes as a day job to me because, right. you know, three years after an acquisition, there's a lot of temptation, especially coming from a startup world of going back into the startup right, kind of entrepreneurial right. side. What's been exciting to click is that it still feels like I'm at a startup. Uh, with all of this AI stuff, uh, it's not hard to be a champion for what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're building really cool things. Uh, we have people who believe in the right vision uh, and the leadership is pushing us in the direction where we are on the cutting edge. Uh, so while we're not you know, the hyperscalers of the world, yeah, yeah. we're competing with them because we are building stuff on the cutting edge like they are and, and hanging out in that same space in my opinion, in a way that's so much more consumable for the business users, right? Yeah, yeah. They build for developers. I like to think we build for the, the business user first, and, and that resonates with a lot of people, so. And in many ways, you know, in some spaces you compete, and in other places you, you, you partner. You've got yeah. AWS, yeah. for example, your platforms uh, built on their, their environment. Yeah. Um, so I think there's that, that interesting challenge, isn't it, where, you know, in some ways you've got to be competitive with some of the bigger brands, and in other spaces you're partnering with them for yeah. a range of the, the positive reasons. You've had a number of really exciting announcements come out of late, and particularly today. I wonder if you could just walk some of our uh, walk our audience through some of the, the key ones that have been announced today in particular, and we can sort of dive into some of the details of what they mean. Yeah, so I think really a lot of the basis for a lot of the announcements over you know, today and, and this week are around building the foundation for AI, right? Okay. So you saw a lot of stuff coming out around something as simple as data flows and yep. table recipes, right? Which is about how do I get my data ready for AI in the easiest way possible, right? I'm not a, a data, let's say I'm not someone who writes Python all day. Yeah, yeah. So how can I use a no-code interface to get my data into a state where I believe in the results that AI is giving yep. me? Uh, and then a lot of the innovation is how do we expand the AI footprint that we already have, right? So uh, we have our predictive AI product, Click Predict, that we are adding time series capabilities to. So we're adding deep learning mm -hmm. using GPUs to be able to build time series forecasts and models, which wow. is a huge ask from our customers is, look, I just need to build a sales forecast or a demand forecast. So now we'll be able to help them there. Uh, and then you've probably heard the word agentic a million times. The funny thing is though, it still gets underlined in, in red squiggly uh, <laughs> yes, because it's so new. 
that's so new that uh, apparently Microsoft hasn't uh, learned that it's actually a word or people sure. using it as a Should word. Show right? remedy that pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah. So, but you know, this agentic world is evolving so yeah. quickly, uh, and there's a lot of people kind of wondering what does it mean, right? And so I always say, well, I'll tell you what it means to click. To click, it means getting you answers to the questions that you're asking, whether that's from unstructured data or from structured data, mm -hmm. uh, and then giving you the ability to take action on those those answers that you're getting, right? So when we give you an answer from a trusted data source, for you to be able to say, great, summarize this and send it to this person who needs that information, yeah. or go do this task in a system so that I don't have to go and copy and paste everything and do it somewhere else, right? Yeah. So bringing kind of the world of answers and action together is what agentic is to us. Yeah, yeah. and for our audience, just to clarify, you know, it'd be great to sort of get you just to quickly summarize the, the I guess, the the combination of those two where it's the, you know, the generative preform trainer, uh, train uh, uh, interface into yeah. your data you can actually speak in plain English to versus a, an agent that is effectively trained up to act in a persona. Yeah. Maybe just give us a summary of kind of what those two elements are with regard to what Click Answers does with the, as, as far as the GPT, you can just you know, go yeah. out and have a conversation with your data versus an agentic AI agent that can sort of then be told, I want you to behave like this and do these yeah. things for me or as me. Because I think sometimes those lines are very blurry for people. I'd love you to sort of give us the click version of what that means yeah. on both sides of the click to answer space. Yeah, if you look at our customer list, it's, it's a lot of the Fortune 100 companies, right? Yep. And so there's this expectation of trust and reliability before you roll it out to their hundreds of thousands of employees that they have consuming yeah. these data products, right? Uh, and so a lot of the foundation for what we do, like you said, take a, a GPT at the core of it all, but introduce guardrails around it to make sure that the answers that you're getting one, are coming from data sources that you have curated and said are trusted, reliable sources. So I don't want to use the information from the internet that the yeah. GPT's been trained on, right? Um, instead, I want to use that knowledge that it has to understand intent and infer what the user's asking, but then to use trusted data to answer the question, right? right? right. And to summarize it in a, in a way. And so while that's the core of it, what wraps around it is the different trusted data sources that people are bringing into the click environment. So, in an unstructured world, they're building knowledge bases where they're connecting to their SharePoint yep. uh, folders, where to their S3 buckets, Dropbox. Uh, their business systems where all of their unstructured data like PowerPoints and Word docs and uh, even internet website pages all live today. Yeah. Uh, and then they're limiting the scope of what that agent knows to that information, right? So it's not dealing with the issues of hallucination where it's going and using data from some website yeah. somewhere that, that no one's validated or, or giving answers that can lead into trouble, right? Uh, and then we're adding the new element with the structured data world. We've had customers, we've been around for 30 or over 30 years now, right? And so we've had customers spend a lot of time investing building data models, uh, defining master measures, dimensions, yep. uh, and really scoping out this is the data that my users need to be able to, to use to get the answers they need. So now we can integrate that with the GPT and combine the, those two worlds together so that you can ask a question, and that answer might come from unstructured, it might come from structured, it might come from both, right? And so in one place you can bring both those worlds together, but you can verify where that information came from Love it. and feel a lot more confident that it's the right answer that you should Brilliant. be using. Because I think there's that unknown thing around the sort of the, you know, the GPT or, you know, gender preform transform or whatever um, that people think they're talking to it but as you said they aren't always certain where the answer came from yeah. and and often they might get two different variations and their concerns I, I love the fact you've actually not only just put the guardrails around it but you put all the ecosystem around to make sure that those checks and balances are in place so they they can quote unquote bank on that data yeah um, you've also announced that you uh, now that you, you have now added structured data Walk us through kind of the, what that actually means, not just in the click infrastructure, but other systems as well, because I know you can yeah. talk to you know, sort of the click back-end platforms that, in, yeah. that are already in structured format, but also other third-party tools, yeah? Yeah, so I think one of our, our differentiators, our bread and butter for years now, has been our associative engine, right? And that's yep. the ability to bring in disparate data sources uh, and then find the relationships that exist between those data sources without having to do the traditional SQL-based join, where yep. the, the risks with that are, is if you didn't join some tables up, maybe yep. there's a relationship that exists there that you don't know about, right? And so you're really limited to the scope of what did the user ask in their query, right? and you can't look beyond that. And so what makes the Associative Engine so great is that it naturally looks beyond even the selections that you've made and filtered down to. Uh, and so that's the core of adding that structured data to our assistance and click answers is the fact that you can explore across a realm right. of data from different sources, uh, but more importantly, we're not doing what a lot of other vendors are doing in doing text to SQL. 
right? And for me, there's okay. a lot of risk in a text to SQL type generation yes. from, from generative AI because one, are they using the right tables? Are they using the right fields in those tables? Yeah, yeah. Are they joining them the right way, aggregating data the right way? There's a lot of big question marks that, that yeah, come up. Are they supposed with. to have access to it? Yeah, exa exa <laughs> exactly. And so we have the, be the added benefit of having already defined those data models, right. put those security permissions on top of it, uh, and feeling a lot more confident that the answer that comes out of that data model is the right answer with the right, right data right. that that user is supposed to be able to see. Right? Fantastic, I, th I think this is going to be a, a big growth area for you and your team in that you know, there's, there's, you know, when we think about the volume of data that's already out there in the world that's in databases and different systems that is in structured format that we really, as you said, we're really only doing basic queries in, in, in some sort of you know, SQL type request that we're at command line or we've got some sort of tool that's doing that as a proxy for us um, to be able to actually not necessarily get rid of that, but to, to sort of do something slightly more intelligent yeah. around that. I think it's just going to, in many ways, it's going to democratize a lot of access to data where people aren't database people or database engineers or code writers and maybe don't have access to a tool, can now just start having a plain English conversation exactly. with systems that they, they probably have access to, but limited knowledge on how to get benefit from. Uh, and, and maybe you didn't even know some of the, the value that's in the data sets, they just didn't touch it. I've seen a number of people where, in a couple of demos, They've sat down and, and someone's walked through a couple of basic plain English questions mm -hmm. and then gone sideways and said, well, what don't I know or what else do you have? And all of a sudden it's like, boom, these people just look at it and go, that's in our data? Yeah. Yep. Wait, what? Yep. You know, and you can just see their brain going by the little cog going, oh my God. You yeah. know? And uh, it's like that little eureka moment of the aha moment. It's like, well, oh, there's money in that. Right? Yeah. Yep. Um, well, the, the unstructured data is pretty exciting. You, you've, um, tell me about the, 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 the agenic uh, agentic AI uh, extension element because I think, um, as you said, like you know, Microsoft Word's still underlining the word in red. Um, when you integrate that into third parties, firstly, what does it actually mean in, in a general sense for for lay people? Yeah. And then two, kind of, you know, what does it actually open up as far as potential uses and in, in, in data analysis and, yeah. and I th so forth? I think it's a natural progression in this kind of agentic thing where. The first thing you're doing is looking for answers, right? Yep. Um, in in your various types of data, the next thing you need to be able to do is do something with the, those answers, right? And so I think uh, there's a lot of people thinking through, okay, well, how do we go about that, right? Um, there's a lot of vendors who make that possible in their platform. So you know, you, you have a specific yep. niche tool where, yeah, you can take action in that tool, but you can't reach beyond the, the, right. the scope of that. Um, where we're very fortunate is we made an acquisition back in 2018 um, of a company that became what's called Click App Automations now. Yep. Uh, and that's an integration into hundreds of third-party APIs that are most commonly used in, in organizations mm -hmm. today. And the ability to connect into any RESTful API that's available to yeah. you, right? Yeah. So uh, if you have your own internal API that's not you know, necessarily publicly available, you can still access that in the automations. And what that, okay. what that gives the ability to is to bring into those agentic systems the follow-up. Right, so you've asked your question, you got your answer, now I need to tell it to summarize something and right. then take action with it. Yep, yep. Go create a Salesforce opportunity. Go uh, create an Outlook calendar invite yep. with a summary of this answer that you've given me and add these people to it, right? Uh, there's a million different ideas of ways that you can ultimately say, take what you just gave me and go do something with it. And we fortunately have the foundation to integrate into all those systems that make that possible. So now, like you said, in natural plain wow. language, someone can just instruct it to do something yeah, yeah. and it can go and take those, those tasks. It reminds me of Mike Capone's uh, one liner that I wrote down because I actually did yeah. use a pen and paper this morning at the opening keynote and that was he said, AI isn't going to take your job, but someone who's better at AI than you yeah. will take the job. And I, I guess, you know, in, in many ways, what you're describing is people are going to now want and need to get up to speed with some of the tools you're bringing to the market, because if they don't, somebody else is going to be, mm -hmm. and uh, AI won't take the job, but someone who knows AI better yeah. than them, they will. Um, I wonder if we could wrap up with one last thing then, please. Um, what does an ideal route to implementation and adoption of Click Answers look like, if there is such a thing? Yeah, uh, that answer was probably a little more difficult uh, a few weeks ago, right? right. Uh, with the addition of structured data, yep. uh, it gets a lot easier because I so. the, there's a million different things that people are already yep. ready to ask because they already have these applications, these dashboards yep. in yep. their Click environment. Um, and so putting answers on top of that and starting to be able to ask natural language questions yep will come out of the box intuitively for all of them. Fantastic. Um, in the unstructured world, we always say, go and think about what are the use cases where 
you feel like people are not getting the access to the documents and the information that they need yep. to go about their jobs more effectively? Because that's okay. really what it's all about is productivity increases, right? Yep. How can I help my workers in my organization get the answers, the information that they're looking for faster, right? And like you said, uh, like Mike said earlier, right? Uh, if you're not you're not getting replaced by AI, but someone that's yes. using it to do those productivity yep. gains, that person replace will replace you, you right? And so yeah. um, that's why I think it's exciting for what we have to offer is designed for those business users. So it makes it possible for them to adopt these AI tools a lot faster and have so much less of a barrier to entry to be able to start using them to make them more effective at their jobs and then ultimately become champions uh, of AI in their organization. Uh, I suspect there's going to be a, a, an increase in uh, attendees next year of people coming get free click certification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. they can keep their jobs. Well, Carl, it's been great to see you again. It was great to see you in Sydney. I know you're coming back again soon, yeah, so I look forward to catching it with you. In the meantime, uh, congratulations on an amazing yeah. event and really exciting to see some of your announcements today. I'm looking forward to seeing what else comes out yeah. with the Wordwork in the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, and uh, safe travels until we see you in Sydney. Thanks, appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks, Carl.